thought I was going to be the only one in a t-shirt today, and I was nervous. I was like, man, they're going to think I'm a scrub. And then <laughs> Leslie walked in the, into the green room with the t-shirt on. I was like, yes! <laughs> this man has a Tony and a Grammy, and he's still <laughs> chilling. When I say Tony and Grammy winner, does that even like, make sense to you, given where your life was only a few years ago? Um, it sort of does. It sort of does. I mean, just because I, I get to look at Antoinette. That's her full name, Antoinette. Tony's full name. Uh, the Grammy, we, I still haven't gotten my Grammy yet. What? I know. I have to get somebody on that. Suspect. I know. Everybody else in the cast got theirs. I have, anybody in this room? I know there's a lot of powerful people in this room. You, you are in the room dress. where it happens. I know. So if, I mean, <laughs> there's enough power in here that we, we, we can find it for you. Um, before you got your Tony and Grammy and got this opportunity at Hamilton, you were in a really interesting place that a lot of actors, a lot of creatives find themselves in where you were running up against walls and feeling like, maybe I should walk away and do something else. Yeah. Talk a little bit about where you were at and what that decision really took. Um, uh, yeah, it was that... Uh that Saturn Returns thing, if anybody, you know, knows about that thing, right before you turn 30, um, you know, you have that. I didn't know that it was the Saturn Returns thing while I was going through it, but I was just tired of the up and down. You know, the business is, you know, the highs are high and the lows are low, you know. Low. Uh, low. <laughs> and I just was tired of the, you know, the roller coaster of not, I wanted to know that I was going to get a check on Thursday. I wanted to know what the numbers were going to be on the check, you know. So I was just looking for something else to do. Like I said, my, my mentor, he's now my father-in-law, he said, I'd love to see you try first before you quit. And I looked at him like it was crazy. Uh, but what he meant was that um, he said, I, you know, I, I know you pretty well, and I think what you do is you give great meeting. And so when your phone is ringing, when somebody calls to with an opportunity you prepare and you show up and you do the thing but what did you do today the phone didn't ring what did you do today and I didn't I didn't have an answer for him I, he was absolutely right there was half of my business you know um, it's just the, the the dynamic in in our in this line of work is very different than the sisters that were up here before you know they're self-starters which I've had to learn to be I you know I was in a very I was in a place of waiting for the agents and the managers to call with the audition and you know I'll, then I'll show up and do a great job but what and if being mad when they didn't call right when the you know when they didn't call it was like you know I, I didn't know what to do so it was just about getting me off my couch and so now I'm I'm never ever sitting at home I will never wait for a phone to ring ever again I think Dr. Angela Duckworth is going to be calling you for the sequel of Grit. I mean, that's great. Literally Grit esque. Hit me up. What is it about this play? I'll tell you a story. When I first heard about Hamilton, I had some friends who were associated with the production, and it was off Broadway. And they said, hey, "You know, we're doing this this uh, this musical um, about Hamilton, and it's based in hip hop. You're going to love it." And my first thing was like, "Ah, yeah." That sounds like a horrible idea yeah, yeah, yeah. that could go really, really, really badly. Yeah. I was scared. Yeah. So then I, I, I flew to New York. I live in Los Angeles, and I got a text message that said, hey, be at the theater. We got a ticket for you. I literally went home, dropped off my bags, and I went to the theater. And I went to support them, but my inner voice was like, I don't know. Yeah. Bruh, when I tell you that by the end of this musical, I was that dude standing weeping, like yeah. just full tears. It was one of the greatest experiences. And your performance, what you brought to this character in Aaron Burr with this oak was, was so powerful and moving that it changed the way I looked at even the theater. Mm. What do you think it is about this play, this ensemble, the diversity and casting, all these little things that it took, taking this, this American classic tradition in hip hop and using it to tell a historic story, what, what about it made these things come together, you think? Well, Hamilton's a miracle. Hamilton is a miracle. That show, that show is a miracle. It, you know, we had a genius at the helm in Lin-Manuel Miranda. I'm sure he'll sit in, the, in this you know, seat at some point. He's when probably watching right now. It's true, when his schedule clears up. But, you know, to, it would be hubris for me to sit here and say, well, this is exactly how we did it. And you do this and this, and that's how you get a hit. Because if that was true, we'd have one every year and not once in a generation. 
You know, the, they're, they're, when something comes together, when a rent comes together, when a Hamilton comes together, you know, these fiddler on the roof, you know, when these things come, they're, they're a miracle because I'll tell you this story. Um, Lynn and Tommy have a list that they call um, the people who can still fuck it up list. <laughs> and what that is, is, uh, you know, a, a list of everybody involved in the production. Lynn's name is at the top. His name gets crossed off first because he delivers the Bible. His work is done before anybody else's work. And then Tommy's name is on there and the choreographer and the musical director and the ranger and every actor and the costume designer because any one of those things... You know, if we'd gotten the costume slightly wrong, you know, if, if the set, if the calculation of the set was eh, slightly corny or whack, you know, any one of those things could have derailed it and made it something different. So it, it is a miracle that it happened. And, and when, when a hit like that, I, I uh, you know, some, I, I get very lucky now. I get to go to colleges and universities and speak and do really cool things. And this brother asked me at one of the, at ASU, he said, you know, you know, so how do you stay so humble? You know, I was like, you know, I wish I could be on some trip right now. Like, oh, you know, we did this thing, but I'm just so acutely aware of the miraculousness of it. The fact that, you know, we all needed each other so desperately and, and how lucky we were that we were a part of it. And that you guys embraced it, you know, that, it, that it, you, you took it into your lives and you came and you gave us a shot even though, you, even though it was suspect. You know, you gave us a shot and, you know, people gave us a chance. Yeah, I, I bought CDs that night and it's the only thing, it's the only compact disc I own that I've bought in the last five years and it's in my car presently always rotating. Thanks, man. People are like, why is that dude always so happy in his car? <laughs> Singing Hamilton. <laughs> um, with that success that was very unexpected, as a cast, you guys were able to come together and do something that no one's been able to do, really, and negotiate a back end for this thing that you were invested in at the front end. That does not happen very often in this business. How did that happen? Um, well, there's some stuff legally that I can't talk about, but True. I can talk about it in general terms. You know, I can talk about being an actor who had done some television and a little bit of film work before Hamilton. I knew, um, you know, and, and having been on that roller coaster, I, we call it mailbox money. It, you know, in, in my in my line of work, I knew how vital that is for an actor because when when it when the work dries up, you know, what you have is your little tiny investment in your Law & Order SVU or your CSI Miami. You know, when that, you know, after you haven't worked for a few months, you know, when that $3,000 check shows up, it is water in the desert. And um, uh, we all banded together and made that happen. But, um, you know, I, I do think it was important. It was, it's important when, when, the, when the leads, when the, when the marquee names, as it were, none of us were marquee names, but, you know, when, when the people who are maybe out front, you know, join in the fight, too, because um, uh, um, there were some that, that may have said that I didn't have to worry because I've been very lucky. You know, just being in the show alone, I've been able to do other things and stuff, but there were, you know... People in the back, in the dark, who may not have had those same opportunities. So it really, um, it's possible. There's a, there's a little clause in the union that, that allows for a 1%. You know, we're not talking about a whole lot of money. We're talking about a 1% stake in something that you help build, you know, um, it, 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 it's a really collaborative effort to make the theater. And I, and I think it's something that... Um, it should be available to, to these actors that help make these shows. Last thing I'll say is it's, you know, we, we also know that, you know, producing is a, is, is a blood sport and it is really, you know, difficult and shows rarely make money. Um, so, you know, in the situations where nothing's making money, nobody makes any money. Right. <laughs> like, who cares? We're not talking about those times. Right. We're talking about the times when you are lucky enough to help make Star Wars. Like, you should get a tiny little piece of Star Wars. Yeah, just a little something. In my opinion. Put a little something on it. Congrats. Thanks. Do you think that the success of this, of this, this play, this musical, will affect the way uh, these shows are cast and written 
and get a chance to be uh, on Broadway in the future. And when I say that, I mean for people who don't normally look like us. Yeah. Prior to this, there were not a lot of brown folks on Broadway. Yeah. I hope so. Uh, theater is theater is slow. Just the nature of the way theater is developed, it makes it a really slow... You know, it took Lynn six years to write Hamilton. Q-Tip came backstage after a show at The Public, and I was, you know, I was there. I saw the whole thing. He's like, in a daze, Q-Tip. And uh, he says to Lynn, you did it, man. And Lynn was like, yeah. He was like, how'd you do it, man? Like, and Lynn was like, six years. Six years. Yeah. You, you have to walk it down. And so when a, show, when, a, when a project takes you six years to make, you know, you, you're not going to necessarily see a bunch of Hamiltons right away. But I'll be looking six years from now. I'll be looking in 10 years. I'll be looking, to, you know, Rent was the show that inspired Lynn. And I don't know, 15 years later or so, we had In the Heights. We got to see the, what that show, that show inspired this young writer. And here was the result. Um, so we'll see, you know, years from now, the show that some kid right now is, you know, putting in work. He's putting in his six, she's putting in her six years to, you know, deliver Hamilton 2.0 or something. We oh, it's coming. Imagine. Yeah. It's coming. Um, Rent, which, by the way, you were also in at 16 years old. Okay. <laughs> the time comes where this great thing comes to an end, this part of the story. I, I couldn't imagine what that is like to let go and then look, look forward. How did you deal with that, and where do you go now? It took a second to, I mean, that was a trip, man. You know, I mean, that was it. So it, I, I needed a breath. You know, I needed to get off the ride for a second and take a breath. None of us, you know, nobody signs up for an off-Broadway show thinking, like, it's going to do this. You know, so, uh, you know, uh, David famously said, towards the end, <laughs> when you would come out of the stage door, you were a beetle for a block. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, you'd come out of that stage door, and it was insane, the energy coming towards you, man. Like, you know, if you're not sort of, you know, if you don't know who you are, I had a newfound respect for that. You know, I'd never experienced any kind of fame or anything like that. That's not why I got into this. Um, but that thing will rip you apart. That's a whole lot of people projecting something at you that really doesn't have much to do with you. I'll tell you this story. This is what I mean. Towards the end especially, um, you know, there would be people that would like, you know, elbow someone or knock someone over to get a picture with you for like their Snapchat or whatever. And like as soon as they're done with the picture, they're done with you. Like it wasn't, it wasn't about meeting me or an experience with me at all. It was about the picture for the Snapchat. And so like I had to stop doing the stage door at a certain point because it was just like, you know, it didn't serve me. But um, yeah, I, I, I had to get off and it took, a, like it took a while to process what that whole thing was. And for me, now it's about, you know, it took, it's it took me 15 years or so to sort of, you know, find my, you know, um, find this thing that I've been dreaming about for a long time. And so I'm going to give myself at least 15 years to find the next one. Mm. You know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But I'm, in, you know, I'm loving the ride and it's open doors that were never open before. You're making solo albums. You're on tour around the country right now. Um, do people ever like just walk up to you randomly and just start singing at you all from the, time. the show? All the time. <laughs> a couple, a few times a week for sure. Like what is the, what, like what song is usually at the top? I, pardon me, are you Amber, sir? Uh, you know, and everybody thinks they're the first and they think it's very clever. <laughs> And you just, you have to hold space for them, and yeah. Like, oh my God, no one's yes. ever done that before. Yeah, that's, You're yeah. so clever. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. But, you know, here's the, I have friends in L.A. who, you know, at, when you're rolling the dice in this thing, when you're just auditioning and trying to get something, you know, you probably know some of these people, too. You don't really have control over the thing that's going to make you famous. I have plenty of friends. You know people that are famous from some sitcom that they, like, wish they weren't. Damn, that was the thing? Like, I didn't know if I would have known that that was going to be the thing. I might have made a different choice. I'm so, 
lucky and grateful that it's, I'll take part in me or your ambassador for the rest of my life. Yes. If it's, if it, because this thing has meant so much to people, I'm, I'm very grateful. That's amazing. Are you busy tonight? Do you want to stay for dinner? I would love to stay for, for dinner. I, I would love to, uh, yeah. How about if you stayed for dinner and maybe, like, performed for us at dinner? As long as I don't have to sing Pardon Me or You're in Bursa, nah. I'm in. So you do it? Yeah, yeah, I'm in. All right, done deal. We will see Leslie Odom at dinner. Thank you for sharing your story, bro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you, guys.